Although, like, uh, I think on the show it's kind of slightly different, but for this exercise, it's more if you have any problems to heal, you can do all this as exercise. You can use REPL, R E P L, that INT. You don't have to register there, but this goes through the risk, it's going to give you an account and all this kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try to do this one together. So, all right, I'm going to create a new, I'm going to open a new notebook. All right, so uh, I'm not going to use that list, so I'm going to create a new list. And the thing is, uh, you cannot call variable list because list is a reserve for a function list, so you should do something like a list, for example. And how do we create a list? Square brackets. And then we're going to have one, two, three, four, maybe something crazy like 55, then one again, then one again, then six, then 67, and one again, all right? So we got the list. Now we're going to do, now we're going to create a function. So we're going to do def and call it somehow like check for ones, for example. And then later I'm gonna call it or invoke it here. All right, and please uh, take a look here. So actually you see, a list is defined not within the scope of the function. So this is another type of variable. This is a global variable, all right? So there are two types. Uh, there is local one. The local one is supposed to be defined within the scope of the function, and the global one should be defined, can be defined out, uh, out the scope of the function. So if later on we add some other functions, they all could have access to that a list, to that variable, all right? So now, Let's, all right, so according to our plan, we want to grab item by item. So how we're going to do it? We're going to iterate through the list. So we're going to use for loop. So for number in a list. And let's see how it would work. So we do something like print number some kind of investigation so we just want to see if this line of code is doing what we expect it to do so if we run this code yeah so it's actually grabbing number by number from that list so that's cool so now what we have to do now we want to see if number equals to one right so we have to use logic we have to use if statement if number equal equal because this is a comparison operator equals to one then what then we want to print something i don't know like yes all right so it turns out that four, we got four yeses now right but uh, we want to count how many ones do we have so how do we do that we have to come up with some kind of counter. So we want to save our um, answer somewhere. So let's create a new variable and let's call it counter. And let's assign the value of zero. And then we do something like this. So if number is equal to one, then we want to count it. So we want to do counter equal counter plus one or you could do it much simpler so you could you don't have to repeat counter twice so you could do something like this you could uh, counter plus one so it's actually going to do the same job uh, this is Python syntaxis so it's like much easier 
and then all we have to do is to print counter all right so let's run our code all right so it turns out we got four ones on our list and I want to show you something so you see we printing counter outside of the scope of the for loop. What happens if we print counter here? So I just want to show you. So we're going to do print and do something like this. And we're going to do counter. Yeah, so you see when for loop iterates through the list, first count was zero. Then count is one, then count is two, so it's actually adding numbers, all right? And then we got four. Make sense? All right? How about we do something like really difficult? How about we do another exercise? All right, so this is kind of game. So it's called fizz buzz. Uh, and it goes like this. You have to take numbers from 1 up to 100, actually up to 101, and check if number is divisible by 3 or by 5. So if number is divisible with no remainder by 3, you want function print this. If number is divisible by 5, you want the function print uh, bus. But if there is a number like 15, which is divisible by 3 and by 5, you want to print something this bus, right? And let me show you something. There are three different division signs in Python. So it actually works like this. So suppose we have 5 divided by 3 and we're going to get something 1.666666 regular division then we have something like 5 double division sign by 3 and it's going to give you floor division then we have something like 5 and it's called modulus so percentage sign 3 and it's actually going to give you remainder so when you, let's say, when you do division 3 by 3, you want to check that the remainder is equal to what? Zero, right? All right. So, and there is another thing. I don't want you to like manually type all these numbers, 1, 2, 3. So there is a built-in function called range. And range function takes three parameters. So let me show you how it works. So let's do four, let's say number, in range and the first parameter is a start so it's going to be one and it's going to go up to the stop point so if we want to check if 100 is divisible by 3 or by 5 we have to go to stop points got to be 1 or 1 right or like the stop point plus 1 so like something like this and indentation of course and then let's see how it works so let's do print number all right yeah it's working so actually you see it's generating for us all these numbers from one hundred all right so how about I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to think about it and there is a hint so you could use range actually it takes three parameters two are optionals so start stop and step we don't need here a step because by default it's going to be one and we have to use modulus all right
All right, let's let's do this one together. So, okay, I'm gonna open a new notebook. Don't need this anymore. All right, so. Uh, Let's create a function, fees buzz. All right, and just like before, let's generate all these numbers that we want to see if they're divisible. So we're going to do four number in range. 1, 101. So let's see if it's working. Let's do print number. All right, so it's working. All right, so now uh, how do we check if number is divisible? So we have to use modulus and see if remainder is equals to 0. However, there is a small catch, let's say like 15. So if we're going to check if it's divisible by 3, we're going to get the right answer. But the Python is not going to go back and check it if it's also divisible by 5. So we have to create a statement that's actually going to check if numbers divisible by 3 and by 5 with no remainder. So we have to do something like this. Uh, if number modulus by 3 and number okay and I'm missing something here so we have to check zero and number uh, divisible by five with no remainder then we want to print something and we want to print fizzbuzz All right. So, uh, if we want to add more logic, so we have to use what? Else if, right? Elif. Elif. Number. I'm just going to copy it from here. If number is divisible by 3, then we want to print, let's say, fees. Elif number is divisible by 5. We want to print. Bus. Or else, if it's not divisible by 3 and by 5, we just want to see that number. So we want to print number. So let's see if it works. All right. And yes, it's working. So actually, we got 15 and it's 
Fizbas, Princess Fizbas, all right? Everybody got the same result? All right, so how about we do some, we uh, try to use pandas and pandas is a python library it's very good for data analysis and it actually helps you to manipulate multi-dimensional arrays and there are three different data structures within pandas it's series data frame and panel so we actually you should think about them as one-dimensional, two-dimensional, and three-dimensional data structures. But we're going to cover today only data frames. So how about I'm going to open a new uh, notebook. And let's do simple exercise. First of all, we have to import pandas. And you have to do it. All right, so first of all, if you don't want uh, something to be run by Python, you have to use hashtag in the beginning. And this is just kind of notes for us. So we want to import pandas, SPD, and this is kind of convention. And then you have to click here. And let's create two lists. And One's going to be stocks with uh, stock symbols, and the other one's going to be prices, and it's going to be integers, uh, actually floats. I'm sorry, it's actually going to be floats. So this not actual prices, so don't trade on them. I don't want to be held responsible for your losses. So this is just like randomly picked numbers, all right? Okay, so now we got these two lists and we want to create pandas data frame data structure so we actually could do it like this from scratch we could create a new variable let's say portfolio and using this list function and zip function actually what zip does it takes two lists and zip them together and just to see what we're going to get i'm just going to print this portfolio all right, so you see, we actually got list of tuples. So, but now we could do something, something different. So actually we could create pandas data frame. And we have to create a new variable, df or any other name. And actually, we're going to use data frame, which we're going to take from pandas, which we just imported as PD. And then we have to provide data, which is going to be actually our portfolio. And we have to specify the name of the columns. And then we just want to see how it works. So if we run this, we're going to get something like this. Looks familiar, huh? It looks a little bit like spreadsheet. But in fact, it's actually not a spreadsheet. We actually got, you see these numbers, it's called index. It was created by default. So uh, index is not like actually works like in cell. It more, it more like close to primary keys in databases. If you're familiar with databases, the only thing that it doesn't have to be unique. All right. So now we got two columns and five rows, right? So let's say if later on we, we want to add a new column, we could do it simply like this. So let's say we would like to add a new column. Volume, yeah. Yeah, sure, I'm sorry. So actually, let's say we want to add something else, like a new column with new values. Let's say we want to add volume number of shares traded during that day, day. And it's also actually randomly picked numbers. So let's say in millions. OK? All right. So all we have to do is to come up with a new name for a column. 
and assign values. So let's say, I don't know, like 40 millions, 36 millions of shares, just randomly picked numbers. All right? And let's see how it works. So I actually, if we want to go gonna run our code, we're going to get this third column volume, right? So you could actually expand this data frame as much as you want, you could add different values. And actually, we could also change index. And it's like really simple. So all you have to do is to assign a new index to the same variable to data frame. Yeah. Oh. So actually you could change index and you'll see later on when we're going to take like real life example that index could be anything frankly and it, it all depends what you're trying to achieve so in this case I just want to show you you can assign different uh, values to index instead of numbers we could have a b c d and e so we could do it like this all right so now you see we got different index and let me show show you how you could do some slicing and filtering so because column is actually attribute it could be attribute of data frame you could let's say if you want to just get access of this first column stocks you could do df dot name of the column and you're going to get that particular column or you could do basically the same this is just like a different syntaxes and you could see it sometimes people you some, sometimes people do it like this so actually you're going to have like df and again df is a, is a variable name that holds our data frame structure square brackets and the column name same result right all right, so, but what if we want to actually access particular column? So it's like really simple. It's like in a battleship. You have to specify the column and the index. So let's say in this case, I'm saying stocks and index C. And guess what? I'm going to get Twitter. Or you could do it the same thing but as in the previous example because again column is the attribute of the data structure it could be name of the variable dot column name square brackets for index so it's going to be the same right however it's not the most efficient way the most efficient way is to use there are two functions I'm going to show you both it's lock obviously stands for location and I lock it's actually referring to index so basically the difference between these two is lock is gonna uh, perform this uh, search by column and index name by label names and index by index so if we use lock and we're trying to pull out that value so we have to use index and the column name and it's kind of battleship right Okay, so, and now let me show you the index, the iLock. So, and I'm going to print you this whole uh, data frame structure. All right, so let's say I want to get 26. So I have to specify the row. And as you probably rem remember in programming, we start counting with zero. So the first row is zero, one, two, three. So Microsoft is actually going to be four, four rows. And then the first column, 26. Or you could create a new, new data frame structure. So actually, let's say if you want to do some analysis and let's say you want to do if you just need like stocks, yeah. 
Right. One more time. So when you use lock, you have to specify it's actually working with, uh, you don't have to specify, but it's working with labels, right? C, right. And ILOC I lock stands for index. So you have to do indexing. So you have to specify the row and the column. So in this case, I lock. Oh, is that the names you use the? Yeah, index. Yeah, all right. Uh, so you have to do like four throws and the first column. All right. And then let's say if you want to create a new data structure, so you can uh, pick up a new variable name like df new. And then let's say we want to use only two columns, stocks and volume. We don't need prices for some reason. I don't know why. So you could do it like this. And you're going to get something like this. All right? How about we, all right, so uh, I'm also going to show you matplotlib. It's a very powerful uh, library for visualization with Python. So let me close this one. And I'm going to open a new one. All right, so matplotlib. Uh, first, we're going to start with a simple example. Then we're going to take real life example, all right? So first of all, as usual, we have to import matplotlib. And uh, actually, the first two lines, you don't need to use them if you use Anaconda. But if you use that website, so you might want to use these first lines. Otherwise, you don't have to do this. So you actually have to import matplotlib, pyplot, and the pyplot is module of matplotlib because matplotlib is huge. And we're going to import it as plt, this kind of convention. And let's say we have, we have two lists of values. Let's say the first list is year and the second year, uh, the second list is population. Again, randomly picked numbers. Uh, so the only thing that I'm trying to show you that if you want to plot some data on a graph, you have to use plot function. And it actually takes a couple of parameters. So the main ones you have to specify x value for x and y, all right? So let's say, and it's now you see it's creating us matplotlib object. And now we actually want to create a graph. So we actually want to plot it. So now you have to use this function. It's kind of cool one, plt show. So that function actually creates this, performs this magic, and it's actually going to create this graph. All right, so now, yeah. So we got this year is, yeah. Yeah, sure. So we actually, uh, what we're trying to achieve here, we're trying to take two lists with values with some data and we're trying to plot it. So we have to specify x and y, all right? So the first list is going to be x, the population is going to be y. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So and you have to use PLT show. And you could use, like, there are, I really, I really, I really recommend you to go to matplotlib documentation because there are like a bunch of different uh, graphs that you can create. And like, they're really good for financial analysis or any other analysis. So I'm going to show you a couple more. Actually, let's create this. Uh, let's use the same items and let's create a scatter plot. Okay. 
So instead of uh, pay plot, we, we're going to use scatter, same X and Y. So basically the same data, and we're going to get something like this. We try to work with a real life example. Uh, I hope you all got uh, Wi Fi so we could go to, let's say, I'm going to open a new window. Let's go to Yahoo. And let's go to Yahoo Finance. So, and let's actually try to get the, all right, so we got Tesla, let's try Tesla. So what I want you to do, I want you to take historic prices for Tesla, try to plot them, and then we're going to calculate uh, moving average, and we will try to plot the prices to a graph, and we will try to do like a little bit of analysis. So we could go to Tesla. And there is a thing, historic data. So if you click there, you see all this historic data, right? So now you could actually download this data as CSV file. CSV files is comma separated values. So if you go here, uh, just make sure you download file as, I mean, the name doesn't mean anything, but it's got to be .csv. All right? No, no HTML. Not, it's got to be CSV. All right. So for this exercise, I'm gonna yeah. Yeah, we're going to take historic prices and we're going to create a graph and then we will try to find the highest, the highest price and try to draw two lines, horizontal and vertical one. Okay, so now, uh, again, we have to import pandas. And we also want to import daytime module from Python, so we want to create Python day type object. And it's very easy to read to read uh, files, CSV files with the pandas because there is built-in function read underscore CSV. The, the, the main thing is just make sure that you know where you save downloaded your file. So you have to uh, actually execute that file from the right directory where you saved it. All right, so just please pay attention. And then actually we want to use uh, dates as an index. And there is very good, so I mean, later on we want to see actually if it's working or not. So there are two built-in functions, tail and head. And by default, they actually, if you don't specify the number of rows, the tail is going to return you the last five rows from data set. And the head, I'm going to show it to you later, is actually going to return you the five first rows from data set. So let's see if it works. Okay. 
profile. All right. So it works like this. So let's say for some reason you don't want to see five last rows, you could do something like this. You could specify number of rows, let's say two, and you're going to get just two. Yeah. Yeah, because we, 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 we want to use, you see, date as an index. So now we, want, uh, we don't want to use default index like 0, 1, 2, 3. We want to use dates as an index. And we're saying that it's in place means uh, here in this data structure. All right? Okay, so and let me show you how head works. So you could do head. All right, so actually it's returning us like now because I'm specifying the two rows. So actually it's returning us the first two rows from data set, right? All right, so now, now let's try to plot this data to a graph. So we have to import what? We have to import matplotlib just like we did before. As spelled, yeah. I mean, yeah, all right. So actually, the question was, uh, and I guess, uh, where, where should you save the file? So you actually should provide the path to your file here. So in my case, I saved the file in that folder where I'm running this uh, Jupyter, Net, uh, Jupyter uh, file from. But let's say if you, if you save it to desktop, for example, you have to do like desktop slash and you have to provide the path here. Otherwise, it cannot find uh, the file. Or let's say if you use Mac, it's probably going to save it. Uh, if you use the, um, I know. So it's, it's probably going to save it to downloads. OK. All right, so uh, we have to import matplotlib. And now let's, now let's plot this data. So how do we plot this data? First of all, you see we got, we got what? One, two, three, six columns, right? We got open price for Tesla for that particular day, high price, low, close, volume, number of shares traded, and adjusted close. So adjusted close is actually the right price to plot because it's actually include all the splits and other stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm so confused. So where do you like? How do you get the like? How do you put in the CSV file in the? Ah, okay. Again, yeah. So the question is, how do you find the path? So let's say if you, when you actually, when we actually, let, let, let me show it to you one more time. So actually, this is, where is it? All right. So this is Yahoo Finance, right? So actually, we're trying to download this data. So you click here, and it's showing you download link file as, and you can specify where you're downloading. So let's say if you're downloading to where? To desktop, you should say within this, so I'm not going to download it anymore. So you have to provide the path. So it's got to be download, I mean, the desktop slash file. Uh, or let's say if you're saving it to downloads, in some browsers uh, it's actually being saved to downloads by default. You have to specify, all right? All right, so the mm, PLT show. So now we want to plot this adjusted close, this, that column. So we have to use PLT show. And it's going to look like this. So you're going to get this graph. And let me show you. So let's say if we don't specify this adjusted close, for example, and if we would just leave it like this, it's actually going to plot us something, but it's going to be something completely different. So actually, it's going to pick the largest 
uh, values by default, so it's actually going to be volume, and it's going to plot something, something else. So if you want to plot the adjusted close, you have to specify it. All right, now, so uh, it looks like Tesla has been doing pretty good lately, right? But I mean, we would like to know what was the highest price during that period, huh? You don't have to provide figure size, so it's actually just like to show you that you can provide the figure size, otherwise it's just going to plot you, so you could do just dot plot parenthesis. So in this case, I mean, even as humans, we cannot find which one is actually the maximum price. So let's do some exercise. Let's find the max value for that uh, period. And let's draw two lines, vertical and horizontal one. So we could do, we could use pure Python. So we could use pure Python. So all we have to do is specify which column we want to analyze. Like remember in the previous case, we were doing this indexing, slicing, all this kind of stuff. So we, we say a new file. It's actually it's variable that's holding that file that we just read with CSV, uh, CSV file. That data now is data frame now. So we actually got all these columns. So we're saying for adjusted close, please find maximum value and index of maximum value and I'm going to print them both so you could see so it turns out that the, during that period of time the maximum uh, the maximum uh, stock price the maximum value in that particular column in adjusted close was 313.79 and it happened on uh, April 25th right so now let's plot this, let's draw these two, let's draw these two horizontal and vertical lines. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to plot first of all, again, I'm plotting this price and then I'm trying to draw these two, two lines and I'm specifying the color let's say red or you could use any other color like blue or anything else and creating two variables horizontal line and vertical line and now all we have to do is to plot is to actually to use this function show So we have to do something like this. We have to do exactly like here, PLC show. All right, so now we get in this graph with two lines which actually indicates the highest stock price for that period. Yeah. They actually creating these lines, horizontal and vertical line. Right, and now let's try to create moving average and plot it. So uh, let's take a look again at our data structure. So we're going to take this function head. We just want to see five first rows of that data set from new file. So actually you see that it starts with the April. So let's say we want to create moving average. 
And moving average is what? It's like uh, average, pri average price for five, let's say if we're gonna use five days, it's gonna give us uh, like average price of five days. And let's say we wanna reverse that data set that, so we actually want this to be not the first five rows, but the last five rows. So we could change the index and like in the previous example, we could just like use index and we do we could do this uh, slicing with the minus one. That means we want to start from the bottom. So we want to reverse it. So and again, I'm doing this stack head. And actually, yes, I'm creating a new variable stack. So I want to save this new data structure with a new variable name. <laughs> Okay, so now you see we reverse it and the first five process actually starts with the March data, right? March 27th. So we actually took the same data set and just reversed it. Okay, so now we would like to calculate moving average. And we would like to create a new column with the label MA standing for moving average. So we're taking this, and actually we're gonna use again adjusted clause. So we're taking this new variable stock, trying to access that column, and using the function rolling, we have to specify the number of periods, let's say five days. For some reason you could try anything else, some other uh, values, and we wanna calculate the mean. And again, we wanna get stock and see the five first five rows. All right, so how come we, we have this NAN? NAN stands for not a number. Because, I mean, when you start calculating the moving average, it kicks in on the fifth day, right? So, but let's say we don't have this nonsense here. So there is a great function and it's called drop an A, so it's actually it's gonna get rid of all these N, A, Ns. So all we have to do is to take the variable name that actually holds our structure, use drop an A with the parameter any. And now you see what it's actually doing, it starts the same data, but with uh, from March 31st, not from March, 27s. And now all we have to do is to plot this data. So again, we're going to use matplotlib. And let me show you something. You can create labels. You can actually create a label for X and Y axis. Let's say stock prices. Tesla and the title, something like this. And all we, uh, later on you have to do PLT show, invoke that show function. And we're gonna get this nice, nice graph. All right, so guys, if I move a little bit fast, I actually am gonna take all this code that we covered today and I'm gonna push it to GitHub. Let me show where you can find this GitHub. So. There is a there is a website program with us program with us and actually there is a Slack channel so later on if you have any questions please join us on Slack channel you can ask me you can find me there and there is a link to our GitHub here so if you click here I specifically created this new repo here. NASA Space App Challenge. So later on, like in a couple hours, I'm gonna push all the code here so you could find all these exercises there. So you could try to go over them one more time. And if you're new to Python and if you wanna learn more about Python, so you can find uh, many different tutorials on this website, programwithus.com. And there is a very good Python cheat sheet. So actually you could see how to do if statements, how to use 
operators, comparison operators, logic, for loop, and so on. And you can find different tutorials here. So it's actually... Okay. So it's actually, again, program with us.com. All right? So I guess that's it for today. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. Uh -huh.